Whether you've been skating for 10 seconds or 10 years, you've definitely heard of Tony Hawk. He's been in dozens of commercials, had an extremely successful clothing company, toured across the world with his live show Boom Boom Huck Jam, started a foundation that builds skate parks, been a part of some amazing video games, and has won countless competitions. I mean, Tony Hawk has inspired so many people to get out skating. But let's talk about something that isn't just about Tony Hawk though, and that's Birdhouse Skateboards. Tony Hawk is pretty much a brand of his own, so you may already know that he is a co-owner of Birdhouse Skateboards. Most people probably look at Birdhouse Skateboards and only think about Tony Hawk. However, they have had some amazing skaters on their team over the years. I'm talking Steve Barra, I'm talking Willie Santos, I'm talking Andrew Reynolds, just to name a few. Even to this day, they have some of the raddest skaters out there, some of which include Jaws, Lizzie Armanto, and Elliot Sloan. Since the beginning of this company's journey, it has left its mark time and time again in the skateboard community. But today, we aren't talking about those big moments in their history that you may already know about. Instead, we'll be taking a closer look at some of the lesser known facts about Birdhouse Skateboards. Before we dive into those facts though, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get notified about more skateboarding videos like this one in the future. Now let's get started. Let's go back to the beginning, and no, I'm not talking about the 2007 skate video by Birdhouse. I'm talking about when the company was founded in 1992. Birdhouse Skateboards actually started because Tony Hawk's board sponsor at the time, Pal Peralta, was starting to go broke because of another well-known skateboard company, World Industries. At the time, World Industries was running aggressive ads about the skaters that were positive influences and how those positive skaters represented an older, out-of-date style of skateboarding. Instead of trying to become a more hardcore punk skater, Tony Hawk decided to embrace his positive attitude towards skating. At the same time though, he was looking to start a project that would allow him to have more control over his future. Without telling his current skateboard sponsor, Tony Hawk teamed up with another rider, Per Wellander, and began developing a new skateboard company. However, starting a brand new skateboard company wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. In order to get the business up and running, Tony Hawk had to refinance his house, had to sell an extra car he had, and ended up putting most of his own money on the line. The launch of this new skateboard company was truly a sink or float situation. Tony Hawk knew that if this company didn't succeed, he would have to file for bankruptcy. Despite the risks, Tony Hawk was confident in the business and spent months preparing business strategies. We all got Per's business degree to think on that one. At the time, Tony Hawk thought this would be his final project in skateboarding and would eventually ease up on skating demos and competitions to focus more on running the business. I mean, he was the fragile old age of 24 at the time. He didn't think his body could continue skating in competitions much longer. Just a side note, I would love to see young Tony Hawk's face if he knew that when he was 51, he'd still be out there shredding demos. Anyway, this new skateboard company was set to launch at the end of 1991 with the name Birdhouse Projects. However, the name was later changed to Birdhouse Skateboards. Before the company launched, there were rumors amongst the skateboard community that Tony Hawk was leaving Pal Peralta. When the rumors got to Mike Ternaski, who was one of the founders of Plan B Skateboards, he reached out to Tony to ask if he'd be interested in writing for Plan B Skateboards instead. At the time, Plan B had one of the best skate teams around, and Tony Hawk said he was honored to even be considered to ride for them. However, plans were already in motion for Birdhouse Skateboards, and one of the main reasons Tony was leaving Pal Peralta was to be in charge of his own skating career, and being on Plan B Skateboards would have possibly led Tony to be stuck in the same position he already was in. So Tony Hawk declined the offer and called up Stacy Peralta to tell him it was time for him to depart the Pal Peralta team. Stacy Peralta understood and soon after left the company himself to focus on being a Hollywood director. With Tony Hawk free from Pal Peralta, it was time to focus on getting Birdhouse Skateboards off the ground. In 1992, Birdhouse Skateboards released their first skateboard video, Feasters. This skate video is just under 20 minutes long and originally sold for only $5 and had to be ordered directly through Birdhouse Skateboards. Birdhouse had put an ad in a magazine that told people to send $5 to this random address and in return they would get a Birdhouse Feasters VHS tape. 
Nowadays, this physical tape is fairly rare. I mean, the whole Feasters video is on YouTube for free, but getting a hold of a physical copy can be pretty difficult. At the time of recording this video, I could only find one listing for it on eBay for a whopping $75, plus shipping of course, because they ain't throwing that in for free. I mean, I guess I did find it for sale on a few other websites, but most of those websites looked uh, only slightly sketchy. Anyway, as far as I can tell, this Feasters video actually doesn't have an official cover. It literally shipped in a blank white box. I doubt this is an artistic choice, judging from the research I did. I'd have to guess that this is more of a budget choice. However, don't quote me on that. I couldn't find any information backing up that idea. That's just my theory. Speaking of working with a budget, Tony Hawk was actually the video editor and main cameraman for Feasters. Tony Hawk had gotten into video production as a backup if being a full-time skateboarder didn't work out. While out filming, Tony Hawk would be the main cameraman for the other skaters, and when it was Tony Hawk's turn to film a line, he'd hand the camera off to one of the other team writers. Tony Hawk has gone on record to say that he intentionally threw on crazy visual effects on certain parts of the video to cover up some of the poor video quality. While editing, Tony Hawk also had a backseat editor, team writer Jeremy Klein, who often told Tony Hawk to add in additional text and visual effects, which can be seen throughout the video. Some of the text that scrolls across the screen is actually pretty funny, but I think it's even funnier knowing that Jeremy Klein was over Tony Hawk's shoulder telling him to add it in. So what does feasters even mean? According to the team writers at the time, it was an inside joke. They often call Willie Santos a feaster as he was notorious for coming over to someone's house and immediately eating all their food. Personally, I really love feasters. I think it has a lot of sick parts, but after doing some research about it, I think I love it even more. The whole video feels very DIY and feels like you're just hanging out with some friends. If you haven't seen this skate video, I'd recommend checking it out. Again, the full video can be found here on YouTube. Okay, let's jump a little forward in time. I just told you about how the budget for Feasters was next to nothing, so let's talk about one of the higher budgeted Birdhouse skate videos, The End. This skate video was released in 1998 on VHS, but was also re-released on DVD in 2001. The End was one of the first skate videos to be produced entirely on 16mm and 35mm film. At the premiere of The End, most of the team writers featured in the video showed up in suits, with some even arriving in limos. The video actually started two hours later than planned, and it wasn't even 100% complete. The majority of the video was there, but there were still some sections of the video missing. In an interview with Transworld Skate Magazine, Tony Hawk was asked about what the best aspect of the video premiere was, and he responded with not getting killed for showing the video two hours late. The second the video was over, bouncers of the theater immediately tried kicking out the audience of skaters, even though Birdhouse Skateboards had the place booked until 1am. When the crowd was slow to react to the bouncer's demands, they literally started throwing skaters down the steps. Despite the missing chunks of the video, the video premiering two hours late, and aggressive bouncers, the crowd seemed to love the video with many early reactions saying that they hadn't seen a video this great since the Pal Peralta days. We've talked a lot about skate videos Birdhouse has produced, but I want to talk about some recent history now. Let's start with current team rider Aaron Jaws Homoki. Now if you aren't super familiar with Jaws, I'd recommend you go watch every video part he's ever made because they're always bonkers. Personally, I loved his newest part in the 2017 skate video Saturdays. I can't show any of the footage here because of copyright, but I'd recommend checking it out. At the time of this recording, the full Saturdays video can be found on Red Bull TV. Anyway, I think the story about how Jaws became a part of the Birdhouse team is pretty interesting. Jaws wasn't actually discovered by Tony Hawk, but he was discovered by his son, Riley Hawk. The story goes that Riley was watching some of Jaws skate parts online and thought they were so rad that he had to show Tony. In an interview with Jaws, he said that he had received a call from an unknown number while hanging out with a friend. His friend grabbed the phone and answered in a joking way, only to go stone-faced when he realized who he was talking to. His friend slowly handed back the phone and said that he thought it was Tony Hawk on the other end. Luckily, Tony Hawk was cool with the way the phone call went and invited Jaws to come on tour with him to see if things could work out between him and Birdhouse. And as you probably guessed, it worked out. 
In the world of skateboarding, you can't have a much better boss than Tony Hawk. Oftentimes when the Birdhouse team is on the road, they pull out what they call the Tony Hawk card to get out of trouble. Specifically, Jaws said that once they were speeding down a freeway in a tour van with Tony Hawk and they got pulled over. The cops would have probably ticketed them, but noticed that Tony Hawk was in the van with them. Instead, they made Tony Hawk get out of the car, take some photos with them, and then gave them a warning before sending them on their way. Even though you could argue that the face of Birdhouse is Tony Hawk, they have had so many amazing writers, parts, and stories to dig through. Birdhouse Skateboards has been a huge part of the skateboard community, and I bet that even when Tony Hawk finally hangs up the skateboard, the company will still be kicking decades from now. Birdhouse Skateboards isn't just about Tony Hawk, each one of their writers have had some of the most stacked skateboard resumes. I wish I had more time to talk about other interesting tidbits, I didn't even scratch through the surface of the interesting facts I found while I was researching for this video. But this video would be delayed like another month and I can't do that. So subscribe to this channel cause there definitely will be a part 2 in the future. What skateboard company would you like to see me dive deeper into? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you learned a new fact or two about Birdhouse Skateboards. Which fact did you find the most interesting? Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, have fun, good luck, and keep shredding the gnar.